Hello and welcome to Warcraft Daily for today, the 16th of August 2013. So today's news is actually pretty cool. ML Champion did a massive, massive interview with Tom Chilton and thankfully they posted a nice little concise uh, list of points and things and really they're just going to be talking points for the show. And then to round off the show I'm just going to talk about ranged and melee balance. It came up in a recent blue tweet and I actually think it's a kind of interesting discussion. So first of all we have Tom Chilton now. For um, this interview, it's split up into raiding, future plans, connected realms, 5.4, and the past. So we're going to head it off with raiding now. He said that flex will open at the same time as normal. This is actually contrary to something they said earlier, so you'll be able to flex from day one or, I don't know, whenever normal drops, I suppose. Which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, I think flex is really... It's appealing to a different subset of the same niche of people that normal used to apply to. Um, so I think it's only, it actually does make sense to me that that comes out, at least releases on the same day as normal. Whether, you know, I don't maybe think it's as good an idea for it to uh, open up as quickly, you know, as normal. Um, because then it would just be so easy to troll through the entire raid very quickly. Um, you know, for the same reason that LFR doesn't actually let you kill the end boss until maybe a month and a half after the patch drops. I think that's the good way to do things. So anyway, moving on to other things. The Dark Shaman Transmog gear will drop off mobs in Flex normal and heroic, so the only difference here is that we now know that it drops off mobs. That's a good thing. I think uh, I think it's nice to have more interesting loot on trash mobs. It also gives people a little bit more, um, I don't know, it just makes it more bearable, I suppose, knowing that there's a decent chance of getting something. Of course, this gear is for shaman only, and it looks very awesome in my opinion. Next up, they said that they're splitting achievements between 10 and 25 to reduce button, or sorry, not button bloat, achievement bloat, and yeah, this is awesome. Uh, one of the annoying things for me about doing old raids and stuff is when you go into that achievement list to find out what you need to do, it's an absolute clusterfuck, so this would be very nice to have. And overall, just the better... I think achievement bloat's a nice thing to solve in this manner, but also just having achievements being searchable and filters and that kind of thing would be really, really nice. I think you should be able to filter them by boss involved. I think that would be very cool. But anyway, let's move on. They said that they liked how Throne of Thunder emphasized individual responsibility. I think that was great. And they they did say specifically they shan, and I have to agree, because that's a fight where you felt like, you know, you could kill the raid if you fucked up. So, you know, you playing well actually had some real tangible benefit and that you didn't all die. And it just made, I don't know, I think it made a lot more tension. It just made it a more interesting experience. So that's definitely very good. They also said that they like how Thunderforge and in 5.4 Warforged gear um, especially, uh, they just like how it's uh, played out, especially how that the increased drops for player in 25 uh, person mode rewards the logistical challenge. So you are going to gear up a tiny, tiny, tiny bit faster on average in 25, but it's not ridiculously imbalanced in comparison to 10. And given that it is a, m a lot harder to get 25 people together, I think this is actually a very fair thing. So yeah, I, I think it's a great system. Another nice thing about it is it means that even on normal, if you're struggling in a boss between Thunderforged and Valor points, you're always getting little incremental upgrades all over the place. And it's also nice just to have something that's a little bit harder, you know, a little bit more rare to get. But uh, it's just a nice little bonus when you get one. I remember when I got a Thunderforged chest and I was really happy. I, I don't know why, I was just pretty, you know, I was in a good mood about it. So I think it's actually a really good system. Next up, they said the normal raids and scenarios are a good candidate for flex, but it still requires tight tuning for normal raids, and it, you know, this basically isn't a promise. I'd be very wary of scaling applying to normals, and the reason for this is just because, you know, th there's always going to be that one perfect uh, an number of players and, and composition, you know? Like, Right now it's either 20 or 25, but you could hear guilds talking about, oh yeah, we're gonna roll a, a 14 man comp with this specific thing, and it's gonna be so OP because of the way it scales. It would be very hard to to implement a system like that without having a whole bunch of crippling oversights which would allow min-maxers to gain the system. And I think, you know, min-maxing, because it does require effort, you should be able to gain the system too a little bit, but not to the point where it would be ridiculous, and I think it's just... It's hard. Scenarios, however, I think are fantastic for the flexible system, and that should definitely be implemented. Even, you know, they said, I, I just think maybe two to six people would be nice, something like that. But anyway, let's move on to the future. And they talked about a whole bunch of post 5.4 stuff. So they said that they confirmed that there will be something between 5.4 and the expansion. Now, an interesting point is that they didn't say, they said they weren't sure what number. Well, what does that mean? Because if there's new content, 
then the first decimal place is incremented by one. That's always how it's been. So it's not going to be like it's 5.4.5 or 5.4.1 or something like that. They mean 5.5, but since they said they're not sure about the number, does that mean there could be two incremental patches? Who the hell knows? <laughs> Someone has a plan over there in Blizzard, but we clearly don't know. It's nice to see that we're getting content between now and or between 5.4 and the new expansion. So that's all good. Now they also said that they're looking to address the storage issues in the future. This is definitely a problem. I mean, right now on my bank alt, I have four royal satchels, and it's still not enough. I think it's just the nature of an MMO, really, and the fact that you're always getting greys and just random crap dropping and filling up your bags. Most of the stuff that you get in your bags isn't really of much use. You know, I, uh, there's more, there's probably a more elegant way to do this that a lot of people either haven't thought of or that they have internally at Blizzard. So that's one thing. Uh, next up we have skills, blah, 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 that kind of thing. They said that the kind of thing they want to remove is the stuff that is, it's on your bar because you may need it at some point, but you rarely use it. And I'm sure we all have things like this. I know like as a hunter, I've got 24 buttons bound and I don't use all of them all the time. I use all of them. I'd say I use all of them regularly. Um, regular meaning that I use them to a decent uh, degree. So maybe I don't know once, twice a raid at least. And really, if an ability is only being used once or twice a raid, is it an interesting thing that adds to the class in a meaningful way? Probably not. Should it be trimmed? Absolutely. Because having a bajillion buttons is just really off-putting to starting a new class or anything like that. They also said that annual pass isn't planned. Blah. Wow. Way to mince your words. Annual pass isn't planned, but it may be a possibility. Honestly, unless there is like a new Blizzard property coming out or something, I couldn't really see this having even a reason to exist, so that's a thing. Next up, they said that they're happy with cosmetic glyphs and they want to add more minor slots to accommodate for them. I think this is great, and especially with the new wave of cosmetic glyphs that we saw, it's just a nice way to, for people to trick out the character in a way that's other than gear. You know, you can, you can be that shaman that has raptors instead of wolves, and it's just a personal preference thing. It adds more flavor to the game, more customizable more customization in a role-playing game, after all, is great, so it's just such a positive thing. I think it's great. Now, next up, they said that supporting pugs via an in-game interface may be a good thing. Right now, there's been a lot of success with external websites pairing people up, you know, through cross-realm stuff and all these things, and uh, it's, it's actually kind of amazing to see the amount of add-ons and stuff that people have got to do things like this, and they would, might actually support it via an in-game interface. So essentially the way I see this being is you can maybe list your group in an interface and it can maybe parse your realm or you know search or something to get players in. But what's important is that there is a clear leader. That's the one thing that LFR doesn't have. You know, someone has responsibility for the raid, someone has a little bit of authority and you know, mob rule is terrible. Elevar is proof of that, so as long as there's a clear person who's a leader or something like that, I think that's a great system. And finally, they said that rewards are not exciting enough and feel too formulaic. I'm not really sure what to, uh, what to really suggest how to fix uh, how to fix this. They did say it was specifically in quests and a few other things, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it seems like they tried to fix this by adding some more of those on, you know, unuse items like the Pumpable Marmot, but I just found they were annoying, clogged up my bag, and I vendored them or deleted them. So yeah, I don't know how they're going to fix that. Finally, they're not finally, but next up we're talking about Connected Realms. So they said that they won't be used to balance high population realms faction-wise, but faction balance will be taken into account when connecting smaller realms. This is great. It's a little bit unfortunate that high pop realms aren't being faction balanced, but at the end of the day, most of those high pop realms, the vast, 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 vast majority of people are happy. And maybe tooling around with that balance wouldn't be a good thing. Whereas with smaller realms, you have lots of unhappy people and it would be nice to get everything uh, added together in the best way possible. Now, they also said that it's going to roll out very quickly after patch 5.4. That's nice. I was afraid they might dilly-dally a bit and delay the feature, but they're not, which is good. And they also said that there may not be realm-specific things like achievement leaderboards um, and forums and things like that going forward. I don't, I don't know how you'd do that. Like, achievement or sorry, realm-first things are really cool. I mean, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Hell, it's it's I yeah. Moving on to 5.4 and the past, lesser charms and spirits of harmony will likely not become buying on account. This is really unfortunate because these things should have been BOA from the start. They were just the neatest clunky piece of crap. At the end of the day, like, I have 
four crafting characters, all of which can use these, but only one that I actually play regularly. It's just needlessly punishing to have these bind on equipped, or bind on pickup even. So yeah, it should have been fixed, but it just sucks that it isn't. They also said the Timeless Isles will serve as a template for future content. This is great. From uh, my first-hand experience on the Isle, I can say it's the best. You know, the best, like, leveling... Not leveling, it's the best, like, solo... Quest... Not questing. It's, it's a unique thing, you know? It's the best solo PvE experience that they've made. Better than Throne of Thunder, or, you know, Throne of Thunder, the Isle of Thunder. Better than all that stuff. It's great. So, yeah. Well done, Blizzard. You've made something interesting that's dynamic, has player agency, people do what they want. They have ownership over the content they do, and it's just far, far more engaging. And it's also packed full of really cool secrets and goodies and fun stuff to get, which is really fun. So, they also said that an alternative thing for PvP would be to segment player players via item level in PvP. Now, I'm not too sure who said this, but somebody on my channel did say this quite a while ago in the comment section, and I, actually, you know, I said to them that it actually was a pretty cool idea. And I think this would solve a lot of problems. I'm not a PvPer though, so I'm not going to go to this in uh, in depth or detail. Because I don't just, I don't know, I don't think it's really something I have much, uh, much of anything to say on. My opinion doesn't really matter too much on it. And finally, there was just a little bit of talk about melee and ranged balance. So they said it was pretty tricky, but they tried to give melee a little bit more raw damage standing still than ranged. And overall, some fights benefit range, some benefit melee, but really only by a small degree. And I think that's okay. You know, everyone doesn't have to be a perfectly homogenized sort of deal. Nice to have a bit of variation. And hell, if you do well in a fight that doesn't, you know, in a melee friendly fight, if you do well in it, then you feel good about yourself. So hey, I think it's all fun. And that's really it for today's show. I know we went over time, but I wanted to get through that news because well, and, uh, you know, a big-ass interview like that, it's not really the sort of thing everyone wants to read through, and hey, I can do it for you. <laughs> and uh, you can watch some random footage that's probably not related to what I'm talking about in any way in the background. And that's it for the show. Please like and do all that shiz, and I'll see you later.